Ever since I've started this YouTube channel, or more broadly, ever since I started using computers, I have been a huge data hoarder. And recently, this has ballooned to such a problem that I don't have any more storage space anymore. And I even have hard drives full of data, which I stored and can't access anymore, because there's not enough room in my computer for them. Like, physically, I don't have room for this hard drive in my computer. So recently, I've been thinking if there is a way that I could possibly fix that. So instead of removing any data, or getting a cloud subscription, I started looking at NASs. Na NAS I? NASs. I'm gonna go with NASs. They're like $300 for what is essentially a stupid computer with drive slots in it. Basically, it's access an SMB share. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a little bit stupid. I bet I can do that for cheaper and make it more versatile. So then I went to eBay and I got this. Ugh. This is way cheaper, and it's got three slots in it. So in today's video, we're going to be throwing in some storage, throwing on an OS, and we're going to see if we can turn this $50 workstation into a usable file share, which, at least in theory, shouldn't really be that hard, but we'll see. So this right here is a Hewlett Packard Z220 workstation. I picked it up because it was cheap, but a couple of other good reasons for getting one of these yourself is the fact that this is Intel 3rd gen. So even if you find yourself using this as a server to do things that aren't just hosting files, you can pop a 3770K in there and go off to the races and run virtual machines or something. But with the i3-3220 that mine shipped with, and hasn't been changed from, um, should do just fine for posting files, and it could even host a Minecraft server, because this also has 8 gigabytes of RAM. Not particularly fast RAM, but it's RAM. So something you might notice about this machine is just how modifiable it is. I mean, look at it. You got drive slides that are marked out with these markers. You got this, which pressing it down makes so you can remove the optical drives. As you can see here, you can take out your optical drives that is pulling this back. You got more screws for more optical drives. If you need more optical drives, you can put in more optical drives. Guys, even with three optical drives, you can fully spec out the bays in here. Because we have six slots here, that means we can have three optical drives, three hard drives, and we can still plug them all into SATA. What exactly you would need that for, I don't know. I'll figure out a reason. So you might notice these heatsink screws are very much not Phillips head. You can either use flathead like some Neanderthal, or you can slot a Torx bit right in here, and it fits. So these are either Torx or flathead screws. These are all over this computer. You got some here. You gotta make sure the output drive stays secure. And over here near the power supply. Which, I'm guessing this isn't really an anti-consumer move, because it is a workstation. Look at everything else. They wouldn't give us nice drive sleds if they were trying to keep people out. So what I actually think this is for is so somebody with malintent and a Phillips head screwdriver can't take down all of v621.net. But, I mean, if that were really the reason, couldn't they just, you know, put this in here and then just... Here we have basic ass PS2, we've got DVI, display port. By the way, this DVI port, if VGA is more your thing, you can just whop one of these adapters on there. It's VGA now. So you can plug in your VGA cable and plug it into your Neolithic monitor. Threw that way too far. And going down a bit, we have DisplayPort for people who use DisplayPort, um, which is nobody. So we have two USB 2.0 ports, one regular gigabit ethernet port, and two USB 3.0 ports, which I see the blue, I'm calling it USB 3.0. I know that's probably wrong, but I'm calling it USB 3.0 anyway. So I guess if I go missing, that's just because the USB consortium kidnapped me, and then they like shoot me in the back of the head. But um, as far as I'm concerned, that's USB 3. We got line in, headphone, and audio in. And going down even further, and to the right a little bit, we have a mess of PCIe. Don't get too excited, because this one's wired as 4X, this one's 16X, this one's 1X, and this one is also 4X, I think. And this one is actually an open back connector, which is pretty interesting, which means you can plug a 16X into that 8X, which is cool. So, I don't know, you need three graphics cards, one of which is a single slot. HP got you covered. And here we have on the front, power button, USB 2, two USB 3s, headphone, and microphone. And Firewire, if you gave HP more money. Now, fun fact, actually, by undoing the three tabs on the back for the front panel, here we have, in my opinion, one of the most interesting features of this computer. And that's if you take this out, and you take this out, 
and you take this out, if you want to place this computer sideways on a desk, you can put the optical drive in sideways. And you get three of them. It's the same way either way. Doesn't matter if you want three this way or three this way. They all fit. It's amazing. I love it. And I believe you can push this out and flip it around. Because it won't work in the sideways configuration like this. Oh, yeah, there we go. And with that sorted, I can just put this back on and look at that. Sideways off of the gold drive. Nice. This doesn't feel right. Hmm. Yeah, at least needs to take up doing row desk anyway. We're gonna need all of these. Come on, you. These are on here, bruh. Is this a regular? It's not a regular zip tie. <laughs> Um, okay. We have Molex, that's good, we're gonna need that. So a big problem in my main computer is that hard drives don't get the ample cooling that they need, which in here I hope to remedy. We've got one output, we've got the power supply, which is also just sucking out, but there's nothing pushing in or around in here. It's just, yeah, this isn't enough airflow at all, but luckily I have a solution to that. I don't know where this came from, but it's a really good fan and it works too. So let's just put it in here. That's not right. That takes up the whole thing. Huh. Well, um, pull that back a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> uh, that's an atrocity. I just need to mount this, which is easier said than done. Oh no, I got a plan. Let's put this in here, put it through here. Ah, there we go. It's a clean, mean, computing machine. Oh, there's another tail. Oh, let's get that one too. So I'm gonna do now is just plug it in. And this thing is actually pretty quiet, which is important because I'm planning on having it right near where I record. So, we just make sure it still works. Well, it used to be quiet. And now, hard drives. So first of all, in the second slot, I'm going to pop, where did I put it? So this right here is that data storage drive I was talking about that I didn't have enough room to access. So this will be our first share. Put it in there and just slot it in there. Easy peasy. Nice. Now we need to talk about our boot drive. So in typical Windows C fashion, I have gone overkill. So today we're going to be installing onto this, a Fatty Dove Racing SSD, which a lot of people make fun of this name because it's like, man, that must be a terrible mistranslation, but I don't know. This sounds like to me, the most American wedding ever. You got an overweight dove and there's racing. Guys, look at this box. It's, it's amazing. And here we have the SSD itself, which, for the 20 bucks this thing was, it's metal. The only other metal SSD we've used on the channel was that Kingston drive in the MacBook video. So this, this by all means is a great SSD, but I did take it apart and it doesn't appear to have a DRAM cache. I, I was in here already. That's unfortunate, but since we're running Linux, it's not that big of a deal. And since I'm all for properly mounting things, we'll be putting it in this Corsair bracket. Just gotta get this hard drive out of it, which is actually a very important hard drive, and there's going to be a video on it soon, so stay tuned for that if you like interesting hard drives. Now I can put this in here, and it's done. And you might think, oh, well that must be all the drives he's putting in. And not quite, because I found this 300 gigabyte drive that I don't have anything on, so I'm just gonna stick that in here too, because, I mean, any storage is good storage, right? Put a project here, put a project there. These videos are like 100 gigs a piece, so I need all the space I can get. Nice. Now we need to plug them into SATA, which means... So there's one cable in here somewhere. Hey, here it is. Right, because the original owners 
uh, nabbed all the drives. Because, I mean, it's an enterprise computer. It makes sense why they would. So now I bet, ah, uh, yeah, you're just going to lose all the spare parts now. And like, well, no, actually, I'm going to just do a lioness. Put all these in this bag. Done. And there we have it. We have just turned this $50 Hewlett Packard workstation into the stuff of nightmares. So let's install the operating system. And here we have the side panel off of the computer for good luck. Hopefully it'll work well the first time. Now you might be thinking, huh, your monitor looks very much like a ThinkPad. Like, um, yes it does. And uh, why is the Parsec logo there? Huh. Well, I'm actually bending the laws of physics right now. This computer is plugged into a capture card into the capture PC, which I am parsec into. Which means when I turn this thing on, in about half an hour, I should see the BIOS screen. I'm kidding. Parsec's latency is actually really good. So, um, yeah. Which means I can do cool things like this. Cool, right? I definitely didn't have to take this take twice because I forgot to start recording on the computer. So yeah, that's cool. Um, so now we can turn the machine on for the first time. Are you guys ready? And not exactly a huge surprise, it works fine. Oh, hey, an integrated RAID controller. What does smart event mean? Oh, well, I guess that drive is failing. Great. So we're going to ignore that for now. So initially, I was curious what we should do for an operating system. But then I decided, hey, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool if I used one of those cool new YouTube community post things? And so I put up a poll. And here are the results. And we can see that Alpine has won. Now, you might look at that and think, oh, wait, it says other comments has won. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it did. But all the people just voted for Arch. And I said we're not doing Arch. So, um... Yeah, we're going with Alpine. And I just want to say to the one person who accidentally clicked on Windows Server, I'm sorry, I thought it looked better with four options. So, yeah. Small CD-ROM drive update. Um, I did actually find that there was more SATA power in there, so I plugged them in. These two work, but this one doesn't, and none of them are connected to data. I swear, if I could give this computer some sort of, like, LTT name, it would be, like, the God has left us PC or something. Anywho, now we can just put our... Alpine disk into here, this 2009 Kingston Data Traveler to the very fast USB 3.0 port. Oh, I almost forgot, should probably remove these. Just unplug them, because, you know, we don't want to accidentally install to them. So if we just remove those, put them, like, in there, we're good. Now we can turn it on, and there we go. Um, I forgot what it is, the, the button to, to do the booting. Um, hey, there we go. So there's our gra- uh, didn't even let me choose anything, bro. Wow, that is some funny glitching. It's not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> it's, uh, um... So now it works. As you see, I can type in here and it, like, shows up and stuff. It's just a bad cable. So, now we can do setup dash alpine. And what does that say? Ah, pull, it's... Oh my goodness, I did it. I did it, guys. I figured out my time zone. Okay, so yeah, now we're installing the operating system. Nice. I guess it all went according to plan. The CLI operating systems, they're just so comfy. I like them. Installation complete? Really? I remember it being harder last time. What happened? Okay, so let's do reboot then. Now we should boot to the SSD. Alright. Yes? Yes? And it's Alpine, guys! Wow! So we're gonna log in as root. Add itself a new user because, good lord, we're not using root. I'm gonna give it the same password as root because I'm insane. There we go, now we can do... There we go! So now we need to use Samba, but I have a much better idea for that so normally when you have a server you don't do most of your configuration while you're standing at it in fact if you're a little bit more skilled in the um, area of using amt than i am then you wouldn't even install the operating system at the computer to at least simulate proper conditions at least a little bit we're going to be configuring samba using putty 
which essentially this allows us to SSH into the computer, so 192.168.2.142. And there we are. It is a little bit weird to me that uh, setup-alpine is still in the Mati, but luckily we can edit that. So nano slash etc slash Mati. Hmm. So apk, is it apk install? Um, so we need apk dash dash alpine. It's been a while, okay. Uh, add apk add nano sudo. APK sudo <laughs> sudo uh, APK APK there we go it worked perfect so there we go Mati has been edited so now we need to do APK add Samba There we go. So now we can APK add Samba. Whoa, this thing improved since I made the last Alpine video. I expected that to not work again. Nice. I wonder if they saw my video. I forget where Samba saved its configuration file. Hey, there it is. So. There we go. So. There's Samba. Perfect. What are we? We're speedrunning this now, aren't we? So let's mkdir um, slash share. There we go. That'll be good. So since I'm going to make the share name the same as the computer name when we eventually figure it out. So I'll make it placeholder for now. How the heck does this... How, how do you set this up again? So upon the stunning revelation I could actually run two putties at once, I decided, hey, I can just use the same config for a uh, networked thumb drive. So, um, let's type that in now. Do I need the... I, I think I need the whole configuration file, though. So, apk... Um, no, I need to be root. I am already root. So I'm going to... Um, that was fast. Hey, there we go. There's my config file equals no public no no yes okay <laughs> so let's try this again reboot hey look it's booted nice you can see there definitely not at the computer uh, uh, crap so it's rc service rc service Samba status stopped. Interesting. Samba start. Okay. Um, status started. Okay. Does that mean I can access it now? Hey! Look at that. So. Ah, crap. Samba password. S M B P A S S W D failed to find entry for you. What? Oh, dash A, dash A, yes, dash dash A. Okay, now does it work? Look at that! Hey, here we go. Placeholder. Placeholder works. Let's try to transfer a file to it. Let's put the copy of Alpine on the. Okay, there we go. So now that folder is owned by the user that I'm... <laughs> Whoa! What? Excuse me? That's what I'm talking about! That's the speed I was looking for! And there it is. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's add some more hard drives. So now with the system gently powered off, we can put this in here. I feel like we have the least amount of wires crossed if we do it like this. So we'll do it like that. And now I believe it is safe for us to put the side panel back on. Just gonna... Oh. That's not useful left disk. That is a lot more information than I'm used to. Um... Are these mounted? Bruh. I don't think you're... Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Are we gonna have to edit the F-stab? Bootcamp. Boot Bootcamp? That's for careful storing of the UUIDs. Isn't it cool? You know, 
I bet people a long time ago had to like write this stuff down. So now we need to make some mounting directories. So to be consistent with our slash share, um, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I did them nested? We wouldn't even have to. I'm doing that. So we're going to do mkdir slash share slash. Ooh, I bet this, this might. Mm, not sure how this will do with the permissions, but share slash steam game. Okay. Okay. All right. I got this. UUID equals. So first we're going to do boot camp. Let's come over here. Just copy this. Put it in there. It's a very small UUID slash share slash boot camp. You see, it's all coming together now. Zero, zero. So now you can control X, Y, enter, just to make sure it works. Mount, dash A. Hey. So now if I come over here into boot camp, shouldn't I have... Files! Nice! Okay, so now we can add the other one. Control X, Y, enter, mount, dash A. And it worked. So now we can uh, reboot, and hopefully it'll do that and not break. Hoping for the best here. And now, if I come into here, guys, guys, it it works. Look at it. I can do things too. And yeah, it. Okay, well this this window's dead, but so there we go. Now if we uh, run FDIS, I just want to see what this looks like doesn't matter guys it works not only is samba automatically rc serve samba automatically starts up now so it's samba status status started so there we go nice i wonder if i can come in i wonder if i can go in here hey i can so much for windows security am i right i'm a crystal bench it crystal that's not what I asked for. Uh, never done this to a network drive before, though. I wonder if it'll work. <laughs> oh, no, it works. Okay, so we're going to do this 5 12 megabytes. Since I don't want to be here all day, click all. And... Um. Uh. Oh. Um. Bruh. So this is the SSD. Our only bottleneck here is the protocol and gigabitness. Because that's epic. That I could edit off of this if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but I can. So before we call it, I just need to show you what I did with this fan. Because I'm still kind of proud of it. And by proud of it, I mean kind of terrified. I had an idea. It's like, well, it would be nice if I could turn the fan on and off from outside of the case. So I wouldn't have to, you know, reach in there and unplug the fan or just turn, turn the whole computer off whenever I wanted to record, right? So I took the thing from an old fan. You can see I clipped the ends off there, right? And I cut it and added two more wires. And these wires go down and then down and into this hole where, if I take the front off, it pokes out in the form of two pins in the front. So that means if the system is running and it's whisper quiet. So then I took this old unused Asus Q connector thing for like USB. And I put it in here like that. And now I can take this jumper thing this little tiny tiny jumper and put it there and the fan turns on and i can take it out and put it over here and the fan's off so i now have manual fan control and i didn't even have to modify the case okay how do i turn off smart well that stinks so anyways i do believe that that brings this project to a close thank you all so very much for watching and uh please let me know if you liked this it's actually been a very long time since i've done a more nitty gritty linux video well nitty gritty for me anyway so if you enjoyed it please let me know and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye